Today we're going to talk about pain. And pain is a universal problem that can actually affect each and every one of us. Raise your hands if you ever suffered from pain. Okay, see that, of course, many of us are, have been suffering from pain. Apparently, 33% of the world population are suffering from chronic pain, which translates into 1.5 billion people in the world, or 100 million Americans. And half of these people are, in fact, are disabled by it. And the interesting part about pain is that, first of all, it is personal. Each of us experiencing pain in a different manner. And another interesting fact about the pain is that it doesn't matter if it's a back pain or a knee pain, the sensation of pain is generated in the brain. So our goal is actually to reduce human suffering by objectively measuring and treating pain. So when you look at the gold standard of measuring pain, it is very problematic because it is subjective. The only way to measure pain today is just ask you how painful it is for 0 to 10. It is extremely challenging to make a well-informed clinical decisions if you cannot really see what you're treating or you cannot really objectively measure what you're treating. So when, you, when we look at designing a solution for it, our goal for a successful treatment is, first of all, it must objectively measure, image and monitor what we're seeing, what the, the problem is, and adapt to individual pain etiology. Also, it must be non-invasive and non-surgical because it has to be adaptive and flexible, but maybe not less importantly, in order to widely deploy it for millions of people, it cannot be surgical and also it has to have a minimal cost in order to be adopted by the healthcare systems. And also, obviously, it must significantly increase the quality of life of patients. So we partnered across the ocean with another company to develop a solution for it. Uh, and Dr. Bixson will present the solution. Dr. Bixson was the developer of the neuron stimulation platform, which is half of the platform that we introduced, and he's the founder of Soterix. Dr. Bixson. So two companies and two technologies. Elminda Corporation developed a method for mapping ongoing brain activity and transforming that into a representation of normal and pathological brain processes, including pain. What that means is, that they can tell you how much pain you're feeling without you saying a word. The way they achieve that is they begin with non-invasive recording of the brain's neuronal electrical activity using a cap with electrodes in it. And then they transform that activity into a clinically meaningful representation of a pain process. So this is the actual quantitative analysis of a patient with pain. Now from the perspective of a therapeutic company, this is very exciting because each one of these points represents a node for intervention. Now they took this a step further and they recorded these maps from hundreds of subjects, both healthy and suffering from chronic pain, and they created a large database, a, a brain cloud if you will, and we can reference this brain cloud both for developing therapeutic strategies and also for developing, quanti developing quantitative metrics of pain. So Soterix Medical was founded in New York City with the purpose of developing non-invasive neuromodulation treatments for neuropsychiatric disorders, including pain. Now, it's been known for decades that application of weak direct current to the brain will polarize cell membranes, both pre- and postsynaptic processes, and it's been known for decades that when this polarization is sustained for minutes, it will modulate ongoing activity and plasticity. What this means is that controlled application of direct current can be used to change the brain. And so Terex Medical developed a technology we call HDTDCS that was the first technology capable of delivering direct current non-invasively to targeted networks. And we do this with a cap with electrodes in it. So you see there are two companies, two technologies, but one medical device, one platform, a cap with electrodes in it that is used to read and write the brain. And now the approach for treating pain becomes obvious. We start by generating an individualized map of that subject's pain, and then we generalize an individual prescription of how to deliver current to modulate those networks with the goal of restoring normative brain function and therefore reducing pain. So let me walk you through a patient treatment session. It starts, ironically enough, with the generation of pain. So we apply heat stimuli to the subject's forearm. 
This causes the transmission of the information to the subject's brain where it activates the in in individual specific pain networks. These are picked up by the electrodes in the cap and processed by Almeida's BNA system. We can then take that diagnosis and we can invert it to generate a treatment approach where current is applied via the same set of electrodes to these targets. Now critically, we continue to monitor the activity and we can continuously refine this approach, drilling down on the abnormal networks, trying to restore a, na a normal brain state, which we hope will also be associated with a reduction in pain. And so there are several unique features of this technology. One is the use of these uh, painful heat shocks to make the brain manifest its pain processes so that we can diagnose them. And then the referencing of this against this large data set so we can develop therapeutic strategies. Very importantly for us, both the intervention and the monitoring are non-invasive. We can go in, across the entire cortex with our cap, but we can do this without compromising specificity. And this is truly adaptive because it is individualized from the first session to every session. Okay, significant amount of uh, science, engineering, and intellectual property was poured into this program over the last 10 years. And we completed a phase one clinical study for safety and tolerability already two years ago uh, with successful results uh, with Harvard Medical School and National Institute of Health. And also the FDA has designated this trial as a non-significant risk, which is very important for our regulatory pathway going forward. Also, we are running pain pathway studies to better characterize the processes that are induced by pain and also see therapeutic, therapeutic interventions like pharmaceutical interventions, what's happening in the brain. We're doing also in collaboration with Purdue Pharmaceuticals. So one example of such a study that we're running is to show or to map pain-induced pathway that are associated with the heat pain. So the more you increase the heat, you more, the more you increase the, your pain, and we are modeling it and looking at those pain network uh, pathways, common pain network pathways that can inform later on the treatment protocol that we're using as Dr. Bixon described. So right now we started a phase two clinical trial. We are enrolling right now. We completed already five initial patients and uh, Dr. Bixon will talk about it. Or before that, I will show you a patient. It's a study on fibromyalgia pain. It's a very complex pain. And just to give you a feeling of what is this uh, fibromyalgia pain, let's take a look at this patient. Fibromyalgia from the chronic pain. It's an intense, all over kind of a pain. It's maybe as acute as like when you break your leg or you burn yourself. I don't have the strength in my hands and arms can't play with my kids in the way I'd like to. And managing the pain, you know, takes up a lot of my energy and time. So this trial was sponsored by uh, Harvard Medical School and involved applying 10 daily sessions of treatment. Each treatment took about 30 minutes and our primary outcome goal was a 50% reduction in pain, and for those of you familiar with pain trials, this was very ambitious. For the first five patients who have completed this, we met our primary endpoint in four of the five patients, and this represents the result of one of those uh, specific responders in the pretreatment baseline. Both the subject's own self-reporting of pain and the BNA quantitative measure of pain start off as expected very high, and then over the course of 10 sessions of treatment, both those measures drop in parallel. And what's important here is not just the empirical observation that we could reduce pain, but that we have an ongoing neurophysiological measure of how we got there. We're also assessing quality of life in these patients. And as expected, as the burden of continuous pain is removed, quality of life scores increase. It is very heartening to hear these patients describe how they could do things after that they could not do before, like, like pushing a shopping cart or, or washing their hands without being in excruciating pain. So these are clinical trials, but our vision is really to be able to bring it to every clinic around the world. And this before the end of the decade. So as two companies, we have developed a very clear commercialization pathway, which actually starts already next year. Next year, year we're commercializing already the first part, the imaging part, the BNA mapping part. And we'll follow after the phase two trial. We are expecting to have CE mark for the European community uh, for 2015, and also initiate discussion with the FDA on the pivotal trial to be run later on. So we are way within our target to be able to disseminate it before the end of the decade. 
So what have we seen here? We've seen two companies, two very complementary technologies. One, to visualize what's going on in our brain when it is painful. The other one is to target it, both integrated in one adaptive closed-loop system, which is accessible, which is cost-effective. And our hope, it's, it's, and it's in clinical trial already today, so our hope that really this transformation of neuroscience into daily clinical practice will touch the lives of hundreds of millions of people suffering from chronic pain.